Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the logarithm of a complex number. So let's consider the complex plane minus the negative half line. Okay, so I punch out the half line. This is called the slip plane. And then what do I want to do? And now define a function. I'm going to put that in quotation marks. L capital O G, which maps this slip plane into C. By what formula? By L O G of Z is going to be the ordinary real logarithm of the modulus of z plus i, the argument of z. And let's analyze these things. So this is a loaded definition over here because there's lots of things that are loaded, right? So this is a real number. So this is the ordinary, ordinary natural log function. Okay, that we know from just calculus, right? And then this, is, of course, is the multivalued argument, right? This is the multivalued arguments, right? So traditionally, this is not a function, right, as we know it, but it's a multivalued function, right? So this is a multivalued, multi multivalued function, okay? So let's see some examples of this using this multivalued function, okay? So what would, for example, if I want to compute the log, say for example, of i, what would the log of i be? So the log, capital of i, would be what according to this definition? It'd be the log of the modulus of i, the ordinary log of the modulus of i, plus what? Plus i, the argument of i, and now it's the set of argument of i, so I'm going to write this as the set of all what? It's the set of all pi over 2, right? That's the argument of i, right? Plus what? Plus 2 pi n such that n is in n's in z, right? So I can let n be an, a natural number, n be in z, an integer, okay? So that's what it is. In other words, it's just the set of all these arguments over here. So it's going to be i times the set of all these numbers over here, pi over 2, plus 2 pi n for n in z. That's what this multivalued log gives me over here, right? I can do this for any complex number, right? All I have to do is find the modulus of that complex number and the argument. That's all I need to compute the lo this capital log of a complex number. Beautiful. Let's examine some properties of this number. So notice, notice what? Notice, of course, what would the log of 1 be? The log of 1 would just be 0, right? So in other words, the log of a real number is going to output the same formula, right? So in other words, just as a note, so if I plug in like the log L O G of just a real number x, that's just going to be the natural log of that number. Since I can't plug in a negative number over here, it's just going to be the natural number, the, uh, the ordinary logarithm of just the absolute value of x like that, the modulus of x, okay? So it gives me some symmetry over here as well. Excellent. So notice, if I look at e to the log of z, that is e to the ordinary log of the modulus of z plus i argument of z. And of course, this always gives me the same value. This gives me e to the what? This gives me modulus of z, e to the i, e to the i argument of z, and that's a representation of the complex number z. So e to the log capital of z is just going to be z. So if I differentiate this, what do we get? Differentiating this with respect to z, I get e to the log z times whatever the derivative of this function is is going to be equal to 1, right? But e to the log z is equal to z. So this says that the log of z prime is equal to 1 over z. So in other words, L log of z, hence log z is a, an antiderivative of 1 over z. Beautiful, okay? Of course, this only works if I punch out this what? If I punch out the negative half line. I'm not allowed to go around the entire thing because what's the problem over here? The problem is that as I approach this half line between going from either from the pi direction or the negative pi direction, the angle jumps over there, right? So there's a jump discontinuity in the argument over there. So there has to be a jump in the angle. So this function not can, it's not globally continuous, right? So in other words, that's the important feature of this, okay? So what we really have over here is we really have this slip plane. So here's the complex plane. And there's R, there's IR. 
And what we're doing over here is we're computing this function L capital on this line over here. Now I'm prepared to define the ordinary logarithm, right? So it's the ordinary logarithm. So we say, here's the definition. We say that a function L of Z is a branch of the logarithm if L maps omega into C for omega open and connected is continuous, that's important, has to be continuous, holomorphic, and L prime of Z is one over Z. Okay, that's a branch of the logarithm. Okay, so this is called a branch of the logarithm. Okay. So in other words, what I'm doing over here is instead of specifying a, this is going to be a what? It's going to be a single value function. So a branch is not a multi-valued function. A branch is a single valued function, right? And we define log of Z to be the log of the modulus of Z plus I then argument capital of Z, arg capital of Z. And here, of course, that's the principal argument, right? So this, of course, is really the same thing as arg capital of Z is the principal argument. In other words, arg Z, arg is always between what? It's always between negative pi and pi, right? Beautiful. Arg Z, of course, arg Z. Excellent. And this is called the principal, this over here is called the principal, principal branch, the logarithm, principal branch of the log. Okay. Now, it's important to realize that this is not the only choice of a branch of logarithm, right? There's other branches of logarithm. So, like, for example, I could do something like this. I could say, here's the branch of logarithm I want to consider, right? I'm going to punch out this ray. That would give me a different branch of logarithm. I can also do some sort of funny curve like this. As long as it goes to infinity, basically, that's the key feature over here. That would also give me a branch of logarithm. So you can punch out different sort of sectors or different rays and get different branches of the logarithm. But the salient feature when you're defining a branch of the logarithm is notice that the log capital over here is a multi-value function, which the pro it actually gives rise to the class of uh, certain Riemann surfaces, and that can be very important to study later in, in further discussions on analytic continuation. But the whole point now is that I can define a logarithm or a branch of the logarithm provided on a region, provided that region is open and connected, right? The function, the branch has to be continuous. That doesn't, that precludes any jumping in the argument like this multi-value function, right? This multi-value log, well, what will happen? As we go around, what's going to happen is that you're going to basically have a jump in the argument when you get to this point pi over here, right? You're going to jump from pi and you're going to have to either jump back down to negative pi or jump back up to, uh, jump back up by another multiple to three pi or to five pi. So there's always these jumps of two pi in the argument, right? And that doesn't change the argument, that doesn't change the multi-value argument at all, but it changes the particular value of the principal argument, right? So the principal argument needs to give, give rise to a continuous function, not allowing for any jumps in the argument, right? And it has to be holomorphic, right, obviously. And in other words, and it has to be, have the property that its derivative is 1 over z, right? So in fact, it's a genuine, an anti, so it is really an antiderivative of 1 over z, which is the important feature of logarithm. That's what we're going to use to basically keep track of. And of course, what we know is that this is the only function over here, so you should recall that if I integrate d zeta, over zeta, over the unit circle oriented once, I just get what? 2 pi i. If I did any other power of zeta over here, then what I would get is I get a value of zero. So this is the only value that one over zeta is the only one that gives you a non-zero uh, non residue, so to speak. And then we'll use that idea to prove the residue theorem and that will aid us in computing, uh, computing winding numbers and computing uh, various integrals, which is a very, very powerful mechanism. Thank you very much.